Hi, my name is Bobby Beeson and I'm with the Cheesecake Cafe. Um, I'm here today because Jesse invited me to be a part of the Alberta Learning Lab, which is all about getting uh, local food onto more plates. Um, our brand's been in Alberta for about 28 years. Today we have four restaurants. That's in uh, Calgary, Medicine Hat, uh, Edmonton, and Spruce Grove. And each cafe will serve about uh, 15 to 1,500 to 2,000 guests a week. Um, a lot of people believe that we are uh, a big chain. And perhaps that's because we've been around for so long that people assume that that's got to be the case. Either that or they watch a lot of Big Bang Theory and think we're the Cheesecake Factory, um, which is a great company, just not us. Um, to me, we're a small uh, local business that thinks like a chain. So with our systems in particular with um, purchasing, and our background goes back to um, being a Burger King franchise company and then going into full service. So we've got uh, beyond 28 years of having really strict systems that a big chain would have, yet we aren't a big chain. So um, things like, um, well, food costs that were talked about earlier are a really big deal. In fact, our restaurants do a full inventory and a complete uh, profit and loss statement every week. So we're very, very aware of our costs and, and what's coming in the door and uh, how many suppliers we have and our invoicing. So it's um, just all of our systems are very uh, tight in that way. And um, for purchasing, we have contracts with uh, Cisco and uh, JNS. And if you've never heard of JNS, they're a local distributor for m the majority of products, our bakery items, uh, to which we need because if our name didn't give it away, we specialize in cheesecakes. Um, so um, I think we had touched upon it a little earlier. There's a minimum amount of um, product that you can get out of Cisco. So if there's something specific for us, um, and they stock it just for us, we have to push through at least five cases a week. And when you're just needing some sort of yellow food coloring or whichever it is, you're not gonna go through five cases a week. So we really require the smaller distributors to help us with that. Um, uh, even though we pur purchase about 25,000 kilograms of cream cheese uh, a, a year, our desserts are only um, about 20% of our business. The majority comes from a food menu. Uh, we have a fairly large menu, I guess, in these days, um, with about 80 items and another 15 for brunch. Um, uh, we have many dishes that uh, can't be removed. They're the ones that pay the rent. So you've got to have your club houses and your beef dips and things like that. Um, we look to tweak our menu about every six months. Uh, depending if we're doing a price increase or not, because we never want to do the same thing at the same time. Um, tweaks can come from either discovering a new product to add to or complement a menu item. Um, changes can come from product changes with the distributor or the food manufacturer. If anybody has dealt with uh, distributors, Sometimes their product of choice is this company and then all of a sudden it's discontinued and we're on to that company. So sometimes we're not happy with that company so we have to tweak the menu or do something different to uh, go along with that. Uh, or changes can come from simply having to get rid of a dish because we want to add a new one and we can't just keep adding uh, dishes, which we've, we've done before and then all of a sudden we had 140 items on the menu and we went, oh my gosh. Um, to test new products or recipes, um, we have uh, seasonal feature menus, and this is where we get to play a little bit more with uh, new innovation that our, um, that food manufacturers or brokers or the distributors have brought to our attention. And again, um, those feature menus, you're not going to sell the product like you would say that goes into a clubhouse because they're new and they're, they're fleeting. And so, um, you really have to do some coordinating to make sure that you can get the product in and use as much. And so if it's not a listed product with Cisco or something we can get through JNS, uh, we're gonna struggle with even carrying the product. 
uh, having a list of, uh, listing with Cisco, I feel, is a pretty large hurdle for even large manufacturers. Um, manufacturers and brokers work hard to get all these restaurants or buyers together on a new product. And if you can't get enough people and then get that listing, chances are that product's not um, even going to make it. It just won't. Uh, and that can be from someone as large as, say, Maple Leaf that is trying to push through, uh, say, this you know, beautiful um, piece of pork that they are specializing in because they're shipping it to Japan, but uh, they can't get enough people that will buy that product here. So it's kind of doomed. Um, as Jesse spoke upon uh, earlier, uh, Cisco has a regional list of, um, or a list of regional products. And so for today, um, I did a check on all of our purchases. Some of it I knew, some of it I didn't even know. Um, so we uh, are purchasing, our, of our purchases, 38% is from that regional list. And it would probably grow if I added the JNS, but I just didn't have that for today. Um, and of course, I think the products would grow if you even just took in Canada. It would probably go higher and higher and higher. And again, I think, I think everybody is buying uh, local or regional foods, and they don't even know. And again, there's that um, private label that you're like, I don't know what that is. Um, there's also things that I've discovered that aren't on the regional list, but because they aren't a preferred product, it's ignored. So uh, unless I went in and said, okay, here's all the stuff we're buying, and I really found out where it was from, because I know that on the regional list, my French fries aren't there, and um, Lamb Weston is our French fry um, manufacturer, and their fries are different cuts of fries are made in different parts of the country, but our particular cut is from down south. But that is not the preferred French fry at Cisco, so it's not even on the list. So um, there's some digging that you have to do, and, and I think if, if anybody knows a restaurateur, they don't have a lot of time on their hands to hang out with their purchasing list. But um, you know, to our company, uh, being local, uh, buying local is important to us, and it was really heightened just a couple of summers ago when we um, decided to change how we got involved with the community because we were finding that so many people, at least more people than we thought, just thought that we were this ginormous chain. And so we um, purchased a trike and we uh, decided that we were going to go to music festivals and awesome farmers markets like Krista's and uh, sell our cheesecake on a stick and start talking to people. Thank you. And, uh, you know, yeah, so many people were just couldn't believe that we weren't this big chain. And so, and then, and then again, you start connecting with people in the community, and we were like, you know, we've got to look into this a bit more, and that's when we, well, when we changed all the draft on tap to only uh, local craft beer. And, you know, there's been some growing pains, obviously, because, um, you know, if you're not one of the little independents that really is marketing to the 10 percenters, um, you know, we're, we're marketing to the, to the larger population, and they still want their Labatt Blue. And uh, so it's a bit of a struggle, and it's a risk that businesses have to take because, you know, you really risk someone not coming back ever again because you don't have their beer. And so, um, and, and it's difficult to market, oh, we're only local beer, because for the people who believe that you should be buying local, they don't necessarily support you because you're buying local. You're doing what they think you should just be doing. And so you're kind of caught in the middle. And so I think there's got to be more education on what it truly means to be local, what it truly means to buy it, what it truly means for the business to, in a way, put their neck out. We're paying more for that beer. We have bottom lines to hit. And uh, you know, I know that sometimes there's this thought that, oh, the profit margins, that's taking more, um, more precedent over support and health and things like that, but um, when you've when you're even struggling for a 3% bottom line, it matters. 
So um, it's really important to us that, that we do work with our distributor. We can't be having six trucks come to the restaurant. It's got to go through Cisco. It's got to go through JNS. We've, we've got to be able to hit these minimums. Um, and uh, we need those institutions or, or, or Cisco for us. We need them to have the same importance. And so it's more of a collective to put the pressure onto people like that, that this is important, that maybe it's not going to be the majority of the products, but if we can do our best to have as many products as possible, then uh, it can all funnel through and, and we can uh, switch. So um, I think that, and, and from what I believe also being on the um, Alberta Learning Lab, uh, Cisco is a part of it, and I think that that their importance, they're realizing that it's not just about feel good, buy local, it's also an economical thing. It's an environmental thing, and I think it's also a national security thing. And so um, things will change, I just don't know how fast it is, but I think if it's going to change, we'll be right along with them, so thank you.